Gentlemen, once again, it is time for all of you to shut up and sit down. As you know, Insomnia is just a few weeks away, and there is a lot of things happening, as you've seen. The show is coming together nicely, and I can't wait to see my dream come true. But don't let that confuse you. No matter what King Sam says, there will be no match between us. You want this that badly, Sam? then you should have thought of that and you should have taken it more seriously. So enjoy Insomnia without King Sam. Oh, that actually sounds really beautiful. Anyway, I, I want to discuss the issue of John Cutter. Dino D was right when he said I did nothing to help him. And even though it is Sam's fault, I do apologize to you. And therefore, if you really do want this match at Insomnia, then so be it. Dino D will face John Cutter at Insomnia. Cutter will be tempor temporarily allowed to continue his job until Insomnia is over. Also, Bowen and Piper will have their match one-on-one -on -one at Insomnia, but this will be the last time for them, and to make sure it is, it will be a two out of three falls match. Now, let's talk about Final Countdown. More specifically, the issue with Darren Jacobs. Darren what you did was completely unacceptable and completely against the terms of your employment but since this is your first big mistake on the job I'm willing to let it slide on the condition that on Friday you will give a full formal apology in front of everybody to Cashman you embarrassed him and cost him his rematch so I'd say it's the least you can do that's all for now let's kick off the court finals of the tournament Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Darren Jacobs and welcome to Monday Night Mayhem. Can you believe we are only a few shows away from Insomnia? We are so close to wrapping up season number one. And ladies and gentlemen, I cannot wait. We are kicking things off tonight with the beginning of the quarterfinals of the WIW Championship Tournament. And the first man down to the ring is Lachlan, one half of Justice who have come out together here. Remember, Lachlan had to do probably the hardest thing that anyone else had to do in this tournament. He had to take out his own tag team partner to get to this point. And it's good to see that Justice is standing strong, they stay together. And they're not holding grudges, they knew that only one of them was going to go through. The general manager put them in an impossible position. And in the end, Lachlan did walk out the winner with the Justice Kick. But it's now a question of how strong is their bond. But it looks like Nathaniel was there. But his opponent tonight, no sleep for this man. The best striker in the business. The first ever Cruiserweight Champion. It is Oliver Regem making his way down to the ring. No clear path to Insomnia until this match came up for the first ever Cruiserweight Champion, but the best striker in the business now has a shot of progressing to the semi-finals of the WIW Championship Tournament, which, should he win that, he will be going to Insomnia. A huge chance here for both these men. This is one of two tournament matches tonight. The other one is in the main event, and understandably so as well. Brad Skeens will be taking on Aaron Albright in the quarter finals of the WIW Championship Tournament. So we're kicking this one off just because, to, uh, just to space them out, but for Oliver Regem and for Lachlan, it doesn't matter where this match starts on the card, it's about where it ends. Will Justice reign supreme or will Oliver Regem be able to take the cake and uh, 
Shaking of the hands there from Lachlan and Oliver Regem. And away we go as uh, Lachlan kind of just teleports back into his corner. And for Oliver Regem, one of the best strikers in the business. We know he can compete. He proved it last time out. He really did show his strength in that match. And now advancing forward early on here with a couple of atomic drops. Yeah, for Regem, it's been an up and down year. We managed to capture the, the Cruiserweight Championship. The first ever person to do that. And that was one of the high points of his career. Managed to defend it for a couple of weeks before losing it to Jake Griffiths, who, of course, has gone on to have the best Cruiserweight Championship run of, of the uh, title's existence. And for Oliver Regem, who had to fight hard to get here, he knows that this is his biggest chance. Never had a shot at the WIW Championship before. Tonight could be the gateway for his first opportunity at the title. As for Lachlan, like I say, he had the hardest job of having to face his partner in the first round. But look at that big clothesline there. And it's good to see that AD Nathaniel is still going to work with him. And already getting himself involved here. Trying to make sure that Lachlan stays in control. And I'm sure the way they're going to see it, if one of Justice get their hands on the WIW Championship, they can reign justice not only on the tag division like they claimed that they were going to, but now they can reign justice on the entire of the Mayhem brand. Oh, look at that wall went for the distance clothesline. Well caught, though, and managed to counter into a DDT, though, Regem. But now going to get him up. He's going to try again for the discus clothesline. Discus clothesline by Regem. And now, looking for the Regem combo. AD Nathaniel can't distract him. The strikes. Regem combo. Into the cover. But the referee is still distracted. AD Nathaniel distracting the referee for long enough to give his partner a lease of life in this match, but still under ridiculously heavy fire from the first ever Cruiserweight Champion. And now a chair being tossed in by Nathaniel. Clearly the plan is in play. They know what they're going to have to do here tonight. And that is anything that they can think of to get the job done. Because Regem is bringing one hell of a fight to kick off Monday Night Mayhem. We are literally out on the Universe Mode month of Insomnia. Which is scheduled to be a huge match. Beautiful uh, uh, jump off the middle rope and almost gets him there. He gets a two. Lachlan needs to do something drastic here. Oliver Regem is flying out the start. And you've got to imagine that if it weren't for his tag team partner, he might have been out of this one already. Well, Lachlan needs something big. He needs a big strike. He needs something big. Maybe the Justice Kick could help him get there. Should he try it? Oh, there it is! Justice Kick! Justice Kick! And that put away his tag team partner. But what's Lachlan thinking? Oh, look at this. Regem combo, maybe one thing, but he's got his own combination. Beautiful combination. F concluding with a knee across the jaw, into the cover. Is that enough for Lachlan? Two count. And what a first match of the quarterfinals this one is shaping into. Lachlan raising his hand. He's sensing the tide has turned after a match that has been all under Regem's control and now massive clotheslines he's feeling the momentum right now beautiful leg sweep by Lachlan Lachlan taking control back in this match he lost it to start with and now getting it back but now Regem back to his feet looking to try and keep in the control that he's established throughout this match discus punch Discus punch, didn't go for the clothesline, went for the punch. Oh, it didn't do anything. Lachlan back to his feet. And now begging Regem to get back to his. Well, what a contest this has been so far. Both these two giving it their all. And now what's... Oh, looking for that, that middle rope stunner. Beautiful. Flips over through the stunner. Very nicely done there by Lachlan. And now Lachlan picks him back up to his feet. Might try and go for that combo again instead... Hooks the arm, makes it harder for him, and now the combo again. Maybe the justice kick. What can he do here? There's the combo. Can he land with the knee? Knockout knee. And Lachlan is going to the semi-finals. No. Oh, and I thought the hand went down for free there, and I think Lachlan did too. But Regem kicks out at two and a half, and this match continues. After what's been an incredible contest. And now Lachlan keeping in control here. 
AD Nathaniel gave him a lifeline by helping him kick out of the regem combo by distracting the referee before the count could even be made. And now he has taken full advantage of it. You can't say that he hasn't earned his way back into this one. AD Nathaniel may have caused the distraction to get him there to begin with, to give him that opportunity, but he's made good here. And the Aussie Justice, as he calls himself, strike trying to deal with the best striker in the business in Oliver Regem, but Regem just staying too strong. He's just not going down and continues to kick out of everything that Lachlan is throwing at him so far. Now, can he need, he needs something big. The discus punch didn't work. Neither did the discus clothesline. He landed one regen combo. That looked like it did work, but it didn't quite get the cover because the referee distracted before the count was even made. And remember, la ladies and gentlemen, this is only the quarter finals. Imagine the type of intensity we're going to see at the finals at Insomnia for the WIW Championship. A new era will be... A new era of mayhem will be crowned regardless of the result. But it just depends on who's in it. We've got a bunch of left. We have eight people all ready to stake their claim to the WIW. Oh, I saw that. Went for the discus clothesline. Well scouted though by, by Lachlan. Now has him in the corner again looking for that stunner. One more time if he can get it. Looking for it. Oh, beautiful. Perfect connection there by Lachlan. And he knows he did well there. Look at him. And now Lachlan playing to the crowd. In control of this one now. After a really slow start, he's worked his way back into it. Justice. They say they'll do whatever it takes, whatever is necessary to get the job done. And that's exactly what Lachlan is trying to prove here. And AD Nathaniel being a very strong, supportive teammate for him. Oh, caught the discus clothesline. Very well caught. Very nicely done there by... Mr. Aussie Justice, beautiful work there. And now continues to move forward with a spine buster. And look at this, Lachlan begging him to get back to his feet. He is in complete control now. And look at Lachlan stalking his prey, begging him to get up. But Regem, slow to move. He's taking a hell of a beating here. And he's struggling to find some energy back in this one. And Regem, under heavy fire. How much more can he kick out of? Oh, he saves himself from crashing into the corner there and lands a vicious clothesline. Now bringing him back up to his feet. Trying to advance further forward again. Trying to do something to get himself back in this one. He missed with the discus clothesline. He clearly is expecting it now. Into the cover off that rope stun. That's been more than enough in the history of Mayhem, but it doesn't do the job there. Lachlan in complete control and riding off the momentum right here in this match. After a slow start, he's completely dominating now. And now looking for the discus punch. Connects perfectly. But again, it does nothing. Discus punch for the second time and the second time in a row that Lachlan just gets back up. And clearly not enough on those punches to keep Lachlan down. This has been an incredible display from the, Auss the Aussie that is Lachlan. He's playing, fighting brilliantly. A look at Aiden Nathaniel on the outside. He's loving what he's seeing as well. A brilliant display from his partner tonight. And Regem, after what looked like it was going to be a certain victory for him to start this match, can't get an edge in otherwise right now. Desperately just trying to one-up each other here on strikes, but you can't trade strikes with Regem. That's why! Regem combo from out of nowhere! Couldn't connect with the discus. Connects with the Regem combo. Is that enough to knock Lachlan out? No! How did he kick out of the regem combo? Especially when he's already had two of them. What a match. This is only the first match of the quarterfinals. But you can tell that they are fighting for the WIW Championship with the match that they are putting on right now. What a performance from both these men. But still we have no idea who's going to walk out the winner here. Both fighting hard. Both putting everything they have into this match. Every big move that they could possibly think of. They've thrown into this match. Well, look at Lachlan there landing on the, on the chair as he rolled out the ring. Awkward placement. But the referee was just trying to get it out of the ring. Wasn't really thinking about the repercussions. Oh, look at that. Waiting for him to jump down and land to the clothesline. The referee begins the count. Be ashamed to see this one end on count out. This has been an incredible matchup. But then again, I said that about the Stephen Miller match. And Stephen Miller took the win regardless. It didn't matter. And now 
up to his feet. Oh, no. Well counted there. Very well counted by Regem. And Regem now trying to find something. His best punches, his best strikes, and still Lachlan has found a way back to his feet. This has been thoroughly entertaining. And now Lachlan lining up for the flipping stunner again. Beautiful front flip stunner over Regem. And that could easily be enough. He moves him into a position to make the cover. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. Lachlan hooking the ropes. This is already going to be hard enough to kick out. Lachlan steals it. And the referee didn't see the feet on the ropes. Well, Justice once again proving they'll do whatever it takes to walk out the winner in what was a grueling match that front flip stunner gets the job done and Lachlan is now in the semi-finals of the WIW Championship Tournament. Well, he's definitely someone that no one thought would make it this far in the tournament. But Lachlan of Justice has progressed to the semi-final. And yes, he did get some help. And yes, he did cheat. But really, did he deserve to win that match? Absolutely. But again, no one's going to be happy about how that match ended. Or how it went down. But for Lachlan, he's just not going to care. This was Lachlan's night. And he progresses to the semi-finals of the tournament. He is one match away from, the, from a WIW Championship shot at Insomnia. Let's move on down the rest of the card. Next up tonight, Hayley Bowen. The former women's champion steps into the ring for some much needed warm up for what you can tell is going to be one of the most gruesome matches of the night. Sandra Piper versus ha Haley Bowen once again, this time for the final time on the grandest stage of them all, Insomnia. And that's just coming in a few short weeks. And no surprise to see Haley Bowen, especially after last week's ambush by Sandra Piper backstage, getting herself some in-ring practice much needed. The former Mayhem Women's Champion. She knows what it takes to be the champion. And she's definitely, she proved that she was a champion by defending it in a fatal four-way. But then was sent straight back in with the most dominant woman on the, br on the brand in Sandra Piper. And now she will meet again at Insomnia. And the next one down to the ring, someone who's already met the wrath of Sandra Piper all the way back at lockdown now. It is Catherine Albright who hasn't had the season one that she would have liked. But I'm sure that she'll be progressing forward. She's made a name for herself. She was brave enough, the only woman brave enough, to lock themselves in a cage, in a cell, excuse me, with Sandra Piper. And of course, we all know how that went down. But Catherine Albright with a win tonight. Could you imagine what that means? The general manager has made it clear he doesn't want to see Sandra Piper and Bowen again. He wants to shake it up, but he said that some other... Other women in the division have to prove that they are ready. They have to prove that they, that Sandra Piper and Hayley Bowen are not the only two dominant women in WIW right now. And of course, I'm sure we'll find some new upcoming talent as well very soon with the Road to Glory tournament continuing. Hopefully, there should be a new episode of the Road to Glory tournament continuing tomorrow. If all goes well, and look at that, very nicely done there by uh, Catherine Albright. And Catherine Albright, as I say, has locked horns with Sandra Piper in the past. The two, the two of them feuded for months, but in the end, uh, Piper, was no, Piper was too much of a task for uh, Catherine Albright. And uh, she continued to prove it week in, week out. Beautiful little STO there. Very nicely done by Bowen. And for Catherine Albright, there was a reason that she had that women's championship shot. It's because she won her number one contender matches. She'd beaten the other women on the brand. And at the time, she was the woman to beat. And that's why everybody thought that maybe she would be the one to slay Sandra Piper. And she couldn't do it. And then a, a few months later, Bowen was in a very similar position. And she lived up to the task. And how she slayed Sandra Piper in a triple threat match. For the Mayhem Women's Championship. She then retained it in a fatal four-way match. Again against Sandra Piper. And Adrian Reyes. And Lulu Torres. And it was clearly 
true that she had proven to be a dominant champion, just like she's proving to be dominant right out here tonight. And she knows that Piper will be watching. And I'd be very surprised if we don't see these two collide very, very soon again after the backstage brawl, though, that they put each other through last week. I can't imagine that they're in a rush to get back in the ring with each other again. They both proved to be lethal opponents, both ready to throw down and do whatever it takes. And that insomnia, the general manager has made it clear this will be the final encounter between Haley Bowen and Sandra Piper. And it will be on the grandest stage of them all. And they've got to prove their point. They're going to make their mark. The two most dominant women on Monday Night Mayhem will collide. And of course, we also know on the other brand, the Fight Night Women's Championship will be defended by Laura Stables against the 2018 Women's Battle Royal winner at Sudden Death in Violet. And now look at this, brushing her with the boot. And then a big running boot as well. And Bowen continues to dominate here in this match. And now looking for the electric chair. This has put away Sandra Piper herself. Has it been enough? Will it be enough here tonight to put Catherine Albright down if she can get it? Electric chair by Bowen. And straight into the cover. Has Catherine Albright got anything to kick out of? She does. She finds the strength and the energy to kick out it too. And Bowen goes straight back to work here, not wasting any time to try and get out Catherine Albright down. The electric chair driver once again. Coming into play, not getting the job done. Well, escaped there of the head scissors by Catherine Albright. But now she needs to mount offense forward. She's all right kicking out a two, but she has to find some offense. And that's exactly what she did in the lockdown match. She survived the pinfalls. She survived the tilt to well slam. She survived the headbutts. But then it got to the point where, you know, Sandra got ang angry and choked her out cold. Luckily, she didn't end up in the state that Elliot Rogers did, where, who is still out cold to this day. Well, maybe still not unconscious, I don't know, uh, the full extent of her injuries. But we know that she has suffered a hell of a lot. And you saw it when those two collided. And now it continues. And now look at this. The punishment continues here from Bowen. Bowen was on a desperate mission to prove that Piper was not all-powerful. That, that someone could beat her. And that's exactly what she did. Was looking for the electric chair driver there. Well read by Catherine Albright. And now read there by Bowen. And now these two trading trading reversals, only one of them are going to get the upper hand there. And Catherine Albright did on that exchange. And now Albright, what can she do? She needs to mount some offense forward, and that's exactly what she's done. Northern Lights. Oh, but she bruises through. Shades of Cashman, Brain Buster. And I don't know why I'm bringing up Cashman. That's the last person I want to talk about today. Into the cover goes Catherine Albright. Is that going to be enough to get the job done to count? And Bowen. Under a bit of fire now, and it looks like Albright might be able to turn the tides here. Bowen's in serious trouble. Kick to the gut, looking for the axe kick. Beautiful. Axe kick to the top of the head. And Catherine Albright has just knocked off the number one. No, she hasn't. The <laughs> two and three quarters all the way there. And now look at this, begging her to get back to her feet, playing to the crowd. The crowd sensing that maybe this one isn't going to be as straightforward as was anticipated. And now what's she doing here? Oh, look at the strength there by Catherine Albright to toss her across the ring. And now the clotheslines. Catherine Albright is coming back in this match. This is heated between these two. Beautiful kick to the top of the skull. A Bowen in serious jeopardy here now of losing the control of this match that she has had for the majority of it. Now in a bad spot there. Well countered there by Catherine Albright who's bridging through for the Northern Lights again. Is he going to go straight back into the Brain Buster? It looks like it. Brain Buster again. And Catherine Albright playing to the crowd as she is making a fantastic comeback right now. And I think a lot of people thought this would just be straightforward. But the general manager said that if you wanted a shot at Insomnia, you had to prove you were the best. And that's exactly what Albright's trying to do here. Bridge through into the cover of that German, but... Didn't matter. And now Bowen playing to the crowd. She has won the crowd over since becoming the Mayhem Women's Champion in what was a surprise turn of events. It had to be said. But now Albright in, tr in trouble now. She had a huge spell of momentum. But it won't mean anything if she can't find an answer to this. Because I knew exactly what she was going for. The same move that put away Sandra Piper the first time. The electric chair. 
out of the corner. And Hayley Bowen is ready for Sandra Pike. No! <laughs> what? Catherine Albright still kicks out. That's what, the second electric chair now? And she's still going. Well, she is putting on a performance. And the women's division that usually was so heavily contested, it was narrowed down to two women. That was Piper and Bowen. But right now, Catherine Albright saying, hey, don't forget about me. She's trying her best to survive. Oh, now what's Bowen doing here? Bowen taking a minute to breathe, and that'll show you how much pain that Albright's actually put on. She's only had spells of momentum, but Bowen's had to literally step out the ring to take a breather. And for Bowen, this is worrying signs. She can't afford to take too much damage, remember, because, of course, should she collide again... Well, when she collides with the Mayhem Women's Champion again, it's going to be problematic if she takes on too much damage and gets herself injured before the biggest match of her life at Insomnia. And now, lining up for one last electric chair. Surely this one to put it away. How much more does Catherine Albrecht have left to give? Surely not enough. Bowen sends a message to Piper no matter what. What? No. No way. No way. How is Catherine Albright still in this? Three electric chairs and Catherine Albright's refusing to give in. What a match this has been so far tonight. Massive German there. What a night it's been. We saw an amazing quarterfinal match between Lachlan and Oliver Regem. And now the women of Monday Night Mayhem proving their points here. Double foot stomp from the top rope. And now playing to the crowd who are loving this. This is incredible action. Two women who have both been in the same position. The two women who looked like they could end Sandra Piper. Only one of them could do it, but Albright proving that she still has something to give. Axe kick. This could be it. This could be the upset for Bowen. Into the cover. Is that enough to put away Halle Bowen? Yes, it is. And clearly, Bowen needs rethink the strategy. Coming into her match at Insomnia, what a huge loss tonight against Catherine Albright, who put on one hell of a display. And she, clearly, she may not be ending the year at Insomnia for season number one, but clearly saying that season number two, she's ready. She's ready to come back strong, and she's finally ready for that women's championship that she's been alluding to and been trying to capture for a very long time. A huge win for Catherine Albright tonight, but for Bowen, that is devastating coming into the grandest stage of them all at Insomnia with Sandra Piper. Will she be able to regroup before Insomnia, or will Sandra Piper just carry now the newly found momentum that she's going to have despite not even being in this match? Let's move on down the rest of the card. I am Dormus, and Dormus has a special announcement to make. As you know, Dormus and Black Jesus have been undefeated on Mayhem. And now we are near Insomnia, and there is no real competition for us on Mayhem, which is why Dormus wants to face a team of Fight Night at Insomnia. But not just any team. We want to make Insomnia as great as we are. So therefore, Dormus is calling out the Wolf Pack for a title unification match at Insomnia! <laughs> Next up tonight, it is time 
for some more preparation as we prepare for what is being called a dream match between the hero of wrestling and the Welsh wonder boy. Mason Foster, of course, will be defending his European Championship against SDC on the grandest stage of them all. That is insomnia. But tonight, SDC gets himself some match preparation and he's going up against the former European Champion in Jax Wolf. Jax Wolf ready to step into the ring tonight. The former European Champion. I'm probably sure he'll be very upset that he couldn't make himself uh, a quarter finalist in the WIW Championship Tournament. He was knocked out in what was probably a surprise upset to many people by Oliver Regem, who went on to lose to Lachlan in the quarterfinals. And would he have done any better in that quarterfinals than than, uh, S uh, than Oliver Regem would have done? I don't know. But it's been a rough ending for season number one for Jax Wolf, who after the trial error has been so brilliant, but is unable to make the most of his momentum. And now tonight, here comes the hero of wrestling, SDC, and look who's with him. It's the European champion, Mason Foster has come out to ringside, and it looks like he's come to watch his opponent for Insomnia, the hero of wrestling, has his opponent for Insomnia watching him at ringside, SDC has been a part of some huge matches, some huge ri rivalries, notably his feud with Albright, his feud with Jaden, his feud with a lot of people. He has been fighting at the top for a long time and we knew this man was destined for greatness since his nine second victory on his debut all the way back when he, when he first arrived here against Robert Hall of all people no less. And SDC was destined for greatness here but yet to capture his first WIW Championship title. And tonight, he wants to help him give himself a warm up, some preparation for what he knows is going to be a gru grueling war if he is to capture his first championship. And straight out the gate there with a massive clothesline by SDC. And for SDC, who hasn't had the most momentum in the world over the last couple of weeks with his notable big losses to, uh, uh, of course, the WIW, former WIW champion, I should say, in um, in Aaron Albright, who of course will be in tonight's main event following this match. But uh, after that display, we thought maybe that it was it for SDC for season number one, that he wasn't going to be able to do anything. But he made the bold choice of not joining the tournament for the WIW championship. He's known his limits and said he wants to go for what he believes is the biggest title in the Mayhem brand in the European Championship currently held by the man on the ringside Mason Foster and look at that bangerang by Jax Wolf and we knew this was going to be a contest tonight Jax Wolf no slouch a former European champion himself so no wonder that the general manager has, has thrown him in the ring with SDC and the self-proclaimed hero of wrestling he's definitely a hero of the fans at the very least very much a loved figure here in WIW but right now on the heavy fire from Jax Wolf, who's been brilliant at the start of this one. Started off started off with a one clothesline, but that's about as much offense as SDC has been able to deliver to him. And now look at this from the top rope with Hurricane Rana. And look at Mason Foster on the outside. Remember, Mason Foster and SDC are quite good friends. The only reason they are going to face each other is because they believe this to be the dream match scenario. These two squaring off. And now look at that, there's a massive... Drop kick there by SDC. They believe this to be the dream match. Two people who are, know each other very well. They are friends, but they, tra they train together. But, as Mason Foster pointed out, as he accepted the challenge last week from SDC, that the, uh, they may be friends, but they have to. To be, a Europe, to be a champion, you have to put friendships aside and do whatever it takes to walk out the champion. And Mason Foster has made it abundantly clear the man who is trying to chase down Jace's reign as, uh, as the most dominant WIW champion. He's desperately trying to do that here tonight. And lands the kryptonite knee. And now we're looking for the injustice. Can the injustice get the job done here tonight? Injustice by the hero of wrestling. Is that going to be enough? It, it took more than one to keep down Jaden. And it's going to need more than one to keep down Jax Wolf. 
for Jaden, who of course had one of SDC's biggest rivalries, concluding at lockdown where he beat him in a Hell in a Cell. Oh, look at that. He has beaten former world champions. He's beaten world champions. He knows what it takes to be at the top. For some reason or another, he just couldn't get the better of Aaron Albright, the four-time WIW champion. And since now he wasn't ch champion, you thought maybe, maybe he would try and take that chance and try and go back for the WIW championship. But he says upon reflection, that title has been tossed around like... You know, uh, like no one's business. We've had so many new champions, and that's true. The title history, if you look at it on a monthly basis, it changes nearly every week. And now look at this. Oh, my God, Jax Wolf, we're going to fly. Oh, suicide DDT. Huge impact there by Jax Wolf, who's trying to fight his way back in. Did you see that elbow to the back of the skull? And now SDC back under heavy fire. Had his spell with the injustice and couldn't do it. Couldn't keep this man in control. Uh, couldn't keep this man down, I'm sorry. Is what I was meant to say. Now has him on the table. Jax Wolf trying to bring out whatever he can think of here tonight. And now look at this. Oh, Tiger Powerball on the outside. And now SDC, as the count is rising, probably going to bring him back into the ring. He does count of eight. These two back in the ring. And now playing to the crowd, the hero of wrestling, Mason Foster, the European champion, cheering him on. And he doesn't want to, and of course, remember, they are friends. But again, as I mentioned, they will put that friendship aside at Insomnia when these two collide for the European championship. SDC showing the heart that he's expecting to see at the pay-per-view. There's the kryptonite knee again. Kryptonite knee for the second time. Drags him to the middle of the ring, maybe thinking of a cover. No, instead of corkscrew. And now picking him straight back up to his feet, not wasting any time here to continue the offense. In the big Samoan driver and into the cover. Is that going to be enough to put away Jax Wolf? Two count. What a display it's been between these two. And now look at this. Phoenix Flash from the middle rope. Very nicely done, but he's feeling the effects of what's been a grueling match. Jax Wolf really has put him through his paces. And that's exactly what the general manager wanted to see. He wanted to see if he could hang with the European champions. And that's exactly what he's trying to do here. Oh, what's he doing here, though? Oh, he's going for the pop-up cutter onto Jax Wolf. To add insult to injury. Knocks Jax Wolf out with his own move. And the hero of wrestling walks out with the win from... Jax Wolf's own pop-up cutter. Well, he went for his own cutter in the injustice. And that couldn't quite get the job done. Jax Wolf put on one hell of a show, did whatever he could to walk out the winner here tonight. But in the end, the kryptonite knee followed by the pop-up cutter of Jax Wolf gets the job done for the hero of wrestling. Well, he sends his message to Mason Foster, who's watched on the outside. Knows that he's ready. Oh, God! Look at this! In from the crowd! Jaden! What's Jaden doing here? And look at this, Mason Foster desperately trying to save his, save his friend. Trying to save his friend from ambush. Mason Foster had to get in there, had to try and stop his partner from being ambushed. Well, Jaden trying to get something over here on Jaden, his former rival. And it looks like a bit of jealousy at the success that the Hero Wrestling has gone on to achieve in Jaden's misery. And look at Mason. He can't believe his eyes at what he's seeing here. And Jaden trying to get one up on the Hero of Wrestling but couldn't. And he's knocked out with the beautiful Kryptonite knee. Well, what on earth was all that about? I honestly could not tell you, ladies and gentlemen. I have no idea. But Jaden... Tried to get one up on his old rival, but it looks like Mason Foster and SDC work together for now to remove the threat of Jaden. But the question is, when these two collide at Insomnia, is Jaden going to get involved then? Or will they keep their buddy-buddy relationship together when the stage comes at Insomnia? I don't know. So many questions coming into it. We'll have to wait and see, but it is time to move on down the rest of the card. Main event of the evening, 
and it is a huge main event. The quarterfinals of the road, not of the road to glory tournament, I keep doing that, of the WIW Championship Tournament Finals continues here. And it is Aaron Albright taking on Brad Skeens. Two top guys here on Mayhem ready to collide. And out first, the four-time WIW Champion Aaron Albright. Four separate title reigns. The fourth one is longest one yet. And should he make it to the finals, he could be on at Insomnia for his fifth championship win of the year. And Aaron Albright, who was, a, to be honest, a complete failure in season number one, has turned the tide around in season number oh, in season number one after winning, being a mess in the trial there. I completely botched that one up. I'm sorry. But Aaron Albright... If he can win here tonight, we'll progress to the semi-finals. The man who lost his championship and had to use his rematch clause just to get into this tournament is up tonight against a man who has been in great form in season number one. The former European champion stepping into the ring tonight to see what he can do to the w former WIW champion. It's a man on a mission, and that man is Brad Skeens, wearing his new official logo all over. And Skeens ready to go here tonight and collide for the championship uh, in the championship quarterfinals with the former world champion himself. And this is a tough task. This is not an easy thing to expect to do to go in there with. Aaron Albright, he's been so dominant, especially as of lately, but he's always been at the top of the card, always found his way to the championship match, and I'm sure tonight he'll be trying to do no different. But for Brad Skeens, who's only had one attempt ever at the WIW championship, and of course that was back at lockdown, Brad Skeens tonight with one tough task. The general manager has bestowed his faith in him in the past, and tonight... Brad Skeens has the same opportunity presented to himself as he squares off with the former WIW champion. These two shake hands, a sign of respect here. And Albright may not have wanted to be part of this tournament, but they're going to do this. And the bell rings and away we go. They didn't waste any time coming for each other here. Straight into the corner with one another. And Aaron Albright and Brad Skeens, two former champions in their own right. Two big names here on Mayhem, and tonight they, tonight they collide for the, uh, for I, they, I'd say it was the first time, I'd be lying. <laughs> These two have collided many times before in a champion versus champion scenario, back when they were both, respectively, the WIW and European champion. They've teamed together in that. They may have been champions of separate belts, but they were always in and around the same picture as each other, that was for sure. They know each other very well. And that could be very impactful in how proceedings go here tonight. Big spine buster in straight into the cover off of it. Is that going to be enough to keep Albright down? Gets a two though. Very very sharp two, but two nonetheless. And now Skeens looking for a suplex. Oh, well countered there. Sticks a foot under the, to avoid the, the toss over. And now look at this. Oh, might have been looking for a spine buster of his own. Well scouted there by Skeens. And now Skeens, oh. Charged it in, but Albright does well to respond. And these two, very fast-paced matchup to start us off here. And uh, we'll see how that progresses as the match goes on. Big belly in the belly there by uh, Brad Skeens. And Skeens, for some people, he'll be the underdog in this match. For others, he'll be the favorite. It depends on how you view Aaron Albright. But no matter whether or not you say that he was not a true champion, that he lost the title three times after earning it, you can't argue with the fact that he has been a main eventer since pretty much the beginning of season number one. He's always been in and around the title picture. And he is, of course, a four-time WIW champion. And they won't take rain they won't take Lane Renf into account when saying in history that he is a four-time WIW champion. And tried to avoid the package pile driver and did well there. And now what's he thinking? Looking for a pile driver of his own. This time a sit-out pile driver. And Aaron Albright bringing out the big offense. Trying to do whatever's necessary. He knows Skeens isn't someone who's going to go down easy. Skeens 
with some lethal offense that could come out of nowhere, more specifically the spear. But Albright trying to stay in control. Pretty even match so far. No one's really taken, taken full advantage of any type of control. Oh, but now Skeens. Look at Skeens here. Doing whatever is necessary. Looking for a superplex. Putting it all on he the line here to progress to the semi-finals of the tournament. Huge superplex. And into the cover. Is that going to be enough for Aaron Albright to be knocked out of the tournament? I did not think so. And now Brad Skeens. What's he thinking? Aaron Al uh, Brad Skeens not known for his high-flying offense, but a beautiful springboard elbow. And look at this. He is rolling here. Trying to keep this match fast pace, and I guess that's how he wants this one to go. Failed as a package pile driver earlier, but we know that's one of his lethal moves. But of course, we know he has two very lethal ones that usually are very effective. He has that vicious spear that he could literally just hit from nowhere with not really much of a run-up required. Or of course, that new lethal submission that he has been developing, the Anaconda Bite, which if coming into play, no one has been able to break the grasp of it as of yet. So for Brad Skeens, there's a variety of ways he can end it. Aaron Albright, though, he's proved the same, though. Firstly, with that big curb stomp that he's developed as well, which knocked out SDC not once but twice in their WIW Championship encounters. And, of course, if all else fails, he has that double underhook, butterfly brain buster that he can pull off at any time to, w to win the match. And at the count of seven... Brad Skeens brings him back into the ring. He's going to go for the cover here on the former world champion. Going to be enough? Doubt it. And it wasn't. One count. And Skeens got to be worried now. Got a two count early on and then only getting a one count there. Now trying to get behind with a suplex. Well scouted by Skeens. Now Skeens trying to do the same. But Albright felt it coming. And now trying to one-up each other here. But only one of them, remember, can get through. Two big names here in the, on, the, on the red brand. But only one of them will progress to the semi-finals. And for Skeens, this would be considered an upset in my eyes. By knocking off a former world champion. The favourite probably to go on and win it. And of course, Albright had to give up a lot just to be in this tournament. After losing to King Sam at Purgatory. The WIW Championship was vacated by King Sam. And I'm sure King Sam's regretting that now. Because now he doesn't even have the match that he vacated it for. But... uh Say la vie. And now look at this, trying to lift him up. Skeens, but another counter. These two really are back and forth. Nothing really to split them so far. Just trying to land something big. One of them, but neither of them can do it. And now, this might be what he needs. They're going for the Brain Buster. Got him. Brain Buster. By Aaron Albright. And into the cover. Is that going to be enough to get the job done? No! And I thought Aaron Albright just booked his ticket to the semi-finals of the tournament. But Skeens kicks out at two. A lot of heart shown from that kick out. But he's going straight in for another brain buster. Albright just trying to keep this man down. A second brain buster. Drags him away from the ropes. Hook of the leg. Does Skeens have anything left to kick out? Yes, he does. Two and a half count. A look at the face of Albright. It says it all. He could not believe that he didn't just score the three. But straight up to the top with a beautiful moonsault. Just trying here, Aaron Albright, to get this one done. Two brain busters in a row. And still, Skeens kicks out at two. Albright has struggled in the past to keep people down, but he's got a lot better at that lately. But tonight, struggling to keep down Skeens. We knew this one would be a good contest. And so far, it has not failed to disappoint in the slightest. And now Skeens... Oh, there it is! Spear! That completely caught me off guard! The spear from out of nowhere! Skeens advances! Brad Skeens advances! What a huge upset victory! And Aaron Albright is out of the tournament in the quarterfinals! Two massive brain busters!
but neither one can keep him down. And then look at this, the spear from out of nowhere. And Skeens is going to the semi-finals after knocking out the four-time WIW champion. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've got to say, I, I don't believe it. How on earth has that just happened? Skeens with one huge pop-up spear almost has got the job done and he has just eliminated the favorite to win this tournament again well i can't believe i'm saying this i didn't think that would be the case but aaron albright is not going to insomnia currently well ladies and gentlemen that's gonna wrap up tonight's show what a show it was i hope you guys enjoyed be sure to leave a like if you did comment your thoughts and feelings on tonight's show and i will catch you guys in the next one Peace.